So by now you should be used to me saying, what about for higher dimensions? So uh, theorem, I'm not going to prove this one because I can't subdivide cubes and hypercubes and whatnot um, easily. So, uh, but that's one way you can try and prove this theorem. So if A is an N by N matrix, and S is the unit cube in Rn, whereby I mean you go one unit in every direction from the origin and you join all that up to make a cube, like an n-dimensional cube, then the determinant of A the absolute value of the determinant of A is uh, the air, uh, the volume of A S. Just a, a quick comment about this absolute value. Um, I, I didn't really enter into the proof here, but that's because I was hiding stuff. So if I'd switched these two vectors so that this one w was um, so this one here was uh, BD and this one was AC then I would have reversed the sign of the determinant right because then A would have switched with B and C would have switched with D so the sign would have changed so it's really to do with the ordering of the vectors in this picture that is the reason I happen to get the plus sign here. Next remark, what is AS now? It's not a parallelogram anymore. AS, oops, AS is, it's a higher dimensional analog of a parallelogram called a parallelopiped. which I think basically means its legs are parallel. So you can kind of imagine what that would look like. In 3D, it would be something whose faces are parallelograms. And each pair of opposite faces are parallel to one another. Another useful fact um, is the following. So um, theorem. So this is just an alternative, it's very similar, but it's just an alternative way of saying this. So, um, let A1 up to AN be vectors in Rn, and consider the simplex with vertices at the origin A1, A2, all the way up to AN. So what is a simplex? Um, well, in two dimensions, a simplex would be a triangle. So um, one of your vertices is zero, one of them is this vector a1, one of them is a2, and you just basically form all the um, points, all, all the lines between those vectors, and then fill it in. So the, the formal name for this is taking the convex hull of these three points. You get a triangle. In, f in three dimensions, um, you'd have three vectors and you'd end up with some sort of tetrahedron like this. So a simplex is like a tetrahedron in 3D. And in higher dimensions, it's the high dimensional analog of a tetrahedron. So then the conclusion is the volume of this simplex is one over n factorial times 
the determinant of the matrix A, where A has columns A1 up to AN. So these two theorems are closely related, um, basically because you can decompose a cube into n factorial simplices, that's the relationship. Um, and rather than proving either of them, I just want to use this to compute the volumes of some tetrahedra in 3D, because that's a, a neat trick. Um, so for example, let's take uh, the tetrahedron with vertices at the origin at 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So its volume is 1 over 3 factorial, which is 6, times the determinant of 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, just sticking those columns in, and that's 1. Right, that determinant is 1. So the volume is 1 over 6. Another example. Let's take um, the regular tetrahedron with vertices, oops, tetrahedron with vertices at um, 1, 1, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, and minus 1, minus 1, 1. Where am I getting these from? Well, if you draw a cube, and you pick every other vertex. In other words, you, you pick four vertices such that no two share an edge. Then what you get is a tetrahedron. And it's a regular tetrahedron, so all the side lengths are the same. Okay, and um, so here I'm picking the cube to be the one whose vertices are like one, 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 1, 1, minus 1, etc. So that's where I've got these numbers from. Uh, so this tetrahedron has a name, if you're a, a Dungeons & Dragons fan, this is called a D4, four-sided dice. Or four-sided die. Now, currently we can't just apply our theorem because none of the vertices is at the origin. So let's translate the tetrahedron by this vector minus this vector to make the vertices at the origin. So let's call this A0, A1, A2, A3. So let's, so if we translate everything by minus A0, this becomes 0, this becomes uh, 1 minus 1, minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1. The next one is minus 2, 0, minus 2. And the third one is 0, minus 2, minus 2. So we need to compute 1 over 6 times the determinant of 0, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, 0, minus 2, and minus 2, minus 2, 0. Let's compute this using, I don't know, this cofactor expansion thing. So let's expand around the top row. We get the 1 over 6, and then nothing, and then minus 2 times the determinant of minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, 0. And that all comes with a minus sign because it's in this position. And then minus 2 times minus 2, 0, minus 2, minus 2. 
So I'm writing just vertical lines here rather than writing debt of the matrix. That's something people do sometimes. Just shorthand. So this is 1 over 6 times 2 times, so what's this determinant? Nothing minus 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 so that's uh, three minuses that's minus four and here we've got minus and then some more minuses so again this is in total minus uh, four again because sorry I took the factor of two out already so this is 8, so minus 8, times 2 is 16, so minus 16 over 6. And remember, we have to take the absolute value to get the volume. So the volume of this regular tetrahedron with these vertices is 16 over 6. One last remark. Because any volume is computed by subdividing into sort of infinitesimal cubes, this theorem up here tells us that debt A is the scale factor for any volume. Right, so S starts off having having uh, volume one, the unit cube has volume one. It ends up having volume debt A, and that means any cube that you're using, to, you know, to approximate gets rescaled. Its volume gets rescaled by debt. And that means any shape, because you can approximate it by cubes, has its volume rescaled by debt A. So remark. Debt A, or its absolute value, is the scale factor for volumes under the geometric transform, any volume under the geometric transformation A. And that now means that this formula is completely obvious, at least uh, up to sign. So debt AB is the scale factor for B followed by A. And that's the same as first applying B, that scales by debt B. And then scaling by A, which, uh, sorry, then applying A, which scales by debt A. So this is the the reason for this formula is that debt is really a scale factor for volumes under geometric transformations, and that if you iterate or if you compose uh, geometric transformations, then the scale factors just multiply. <laughs>